Hello and welcome to the Big Bank Theory Podcast. My name's John, I'm here with my friend and colleague Dan. Hello. Uh, and welcome to the Tour of Britain, Dan, Exeter stage. Yep, so now we're, we're just going to talk on. about that bikes, the big bike theory. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, the cycling's happening all around us, listeners, as we speak to you. Um, or rather, the, rig- the rigmarole, the carnival. Yeah, just all the kind of... Um, yeah, I don't know. Accoutrement. Um, accoutrement. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of cycling stuff going on in there. I like cycling. Yes. I'm probably more than your average person. Oh, yeah. Um, that's my main form of transport. Um, but I'll tell you this. I'm not a fan of it as a sport. No? Boring. Yeah, probably good if you're in it. Yeah, oh, fun to be part of. Yeah. But to, to spectate, boring. Goes right past you, doesn't it? The best thing that ever happened in cycling, in a way, is when that woman put that sign out in front of the Tour de France and said, hello, granny and grandpa, and she knocked over the entire tour. On like half an hour into the first race, wasn't it? <laughs> Absolutely brutal. Yeah. And they nearly, I think it was in France, wasn't it? Obviously, Tour de France. Yeah. Um, and they were obviously so annoyed that she'd, you know, destructed all the velos. Good. That, um, you got all the lingo. Um, they were like literally going to prosecute her, like charge her of like I don't know, attempted murder. I mean, it was insane. But I think she got. I think they let her off at the end with a bit of a fine and a kind of a slap on the wrist. I mean, she's literally lambasted by the entire nation. Well, not really. No, only people who care about bike. Racing. But in France, they all care about it. Don't they love it. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they're a strange people. Um. Anyway, ooh la la to them, and bonjour to you. We're here to talk about Exeter City, of course. Yeah. Who uh, held league leaders Forest Green Rovers to a nil-nil draw at St James Park? Yeah, I think that's the way to frame it as well. That we held them, rather it makes than me they, feel better about rather it. Rather than they held us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think you know. Yeah, I see what you mean. League leaders. Um. Just trying to you know put a positive spin. On what and was a yeah, fairly yeah. dull game. Well, it wasn't negative. No. It was a match. I mean, that's, 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 ugh, it's better than losing. I would argue that even though it's early on, uh, again, we're probably, we probably really aren't this, but for if you were going to, if, if you were one of the teams that were kind of pushing for those top spots, yep. that's a game you'd want to win. Home game against one of your, you know, rivals. Yeah. If you want to go up, and I'm not saying this means we're not going to go up because we drew this game. Those are the ones, generally, that you've you got to win those. Agreed. And they didn't look like world beaters, did they? Forest Green? Yeah. No, they didn't. They did look good. Um, I think it looked like they set up in a very similar way to us. Yep. Wing backs, one of which we know very well, mm-hmm. Kane Wilson. The other one looked, you know, quality as well. I yep. think he's kind of, you know. Um, Someone described it as the two best wing backs in the league that aren't named Josh Key. Right. Well, I don't know. But I don't know. I don't know who any of the other wing backs are, so oh. I couldn't possibly say. Mm, um, all right. But they did look good. Um, as did Josh Key, Kane Wilson. I always thought was a little bit overrated. He quick, by isn't he? City fans. Quick yeah, and enthusiastic. Quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, t- I tell you, he was getting short shrift. Who's that? Jake Caprice. Jake Caprice is actually he was getting in the neck from the Big Bang by the end. Absolute pylon. Yeah. Um, Deserved. Well, it, I mean, kind of. He didn't have his best game, but I mean, he's playing. He's playing left wing back, and he's a right. And he's a right back. Yeah. Um. He clearly has no left foot to speak of. Um. So when you run down the line and then can't whip it in with your left foot, people are going to get annoyed. Indeed. And they did. So he's kind of. It's a bit. He's been, he's been put in a bit of an unfair position. I know. You know. He's never been anyone's favourite player, has he, Jake Caprice? No, he hasn't. Um. And I think he did sort of run out of steam towards the end. Um, first half, I actually thought he did quite well. Uh, but second half, every time he kind of went, up, you know, he would, rather than running to the for the byline, he would always kind of double back, obviously to try and put it onto his right foot, cut inside. He had one where he ballooned it miles over, had a shot, yeah. ballooned it like, you know, right over the top. So The lineup was a bit different, wasn't it? So um, we saw Nombe and... Amon starting together. Yeah. So we no no Brown. No Giovanni Brown. Picked up a knock or something, we reckon. Someone saw him with a bit of a bandage on, didn't they? Right, yeah, okay. Or support. Okay, so... Um, 
Yeah, he wasn't there. I mean, I think he's a big miss. A bit... He's been the highlight of the season so far. Yeah, I think he was. And I think he's the one who kind of like, he's looked the best to kind of link the midfield and the attack, yep. hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and the wing backs and the attack. And so we did miss him a bit. I'm not sure Nombe and Amond, who knows? It didn't look like the most natural of partnerships. No. Um, I think they'd both be looking to be the kind of main feature of that mm-hmm. attack. But, you know, I mean, in the past, it's, it seemed, it reminded me a little bit, and in different ways, but of when we, like, occasionally, Matt Taylor would play Bowman and Fisher. <laughs> you remember? Well, occas- yeah, I do vaguely remember those rare occasions. I tell you what, though, for all of that, Nombe had some very good chances in the first half, didn't he? He did have, he did have a couple, yeah. Yeah. One, I think he definitely should have hit the target for. Yeah. He had a couple in the second half as well. I, mean, I keep saying this, but it's going to be a big, it's going to be a big, um, a good thing when he scores in front of the big bank. I think he is going to really, he de- he looks like so desperate to score. He does, and, and he's doing everything, isn't he? Like I, I'm not saying he's doing everything right, but he's really, yeah. And maybe it's just going to, it will just take a little bit of time to settle. In. I, I do worry slightly with him. We're more on this fella later, but with slightly with this kind of how Jose started off. You know, mm. made good runs, got himself in good positions, but couldn't quite finish. We were like, oh, he's a bit rusty still. He hasn't quite got his finishing back yet. And then it, dis- it disappeared off the face of the earth. All fell apart, or didn't did it? he? But anyway, we'll come back to that. But yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen at all. I think Nombe will score a decent amount of goals. I think he will as well. Um, another uh, change was new signing. So listeners, if you recall, last week we were absolutely watching the uh, transfer deadline ticker tape uh, and we finished recording about an hour before uh, new signing Kyle Taylor joined. Yeah, can't be helped. Good to have a Taylor in there. Well, easy, isn't it, to have a Taylor? Um, so he's joined from Bournemouth, signed. I believe it's a three-year contract. Okay. Big deal. So he'd been on loan at South End last season. Yeah. Playing alongside uh, Timmy Dieng. Yeah. And I think he'd had a little spell out Forest Green as well on loan, hadn't he, in the past? I think that's right, yeah. And um, obviously not played a huge amount for Bournemouth. No. But, again, that's, you know, that's, that's the sort of signing, profile-wise, that exactly what we were talking about last week, really, isn't it? He's, I mean, a different sort of player, but that is exactly the circumstances of Randell Williams. Yeah. You know? Playing for a big club, so obviously had a lot of potential. Hasn't quite worked out yet, but he's still young. So, you know, that's the sort of player we want to be taking on. You know, hoping that, you know, helping them kind of. I don't know. I think that's good. I think that's a good move. I got a problem with this though. Yep. I cannot tell the difference between him, Matt, him and Matt J. How old are you? No, you're honestly, right. <laughs> he's the same. I mean, he's taller and he's got a very different gait. Yeah. So watch out for the gate. Yeah, right. Don't let the gate hit you on the ass. Yeah, good good advice right. for all ramblers. Um, and uh, yeah, well, so he, he's got he's the same got hair, same hair, and he's wearing Matt J's old number, and he's got the which same is cu- also very similar to his current number seven and seventeen. Absolute nightmare for me. Um, yeah, well, you know, maybe, maybe he'll get a haircut and he'll be fine. I mean, he looked a bit rusty Saturday. I hope he does get a haircut. Or let it hang low, like some sort of wrestler. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, you um, I you thought he do not get any more. I thought he looked good. He looked quite tidy and stuff. I think, well, I'm hoping for more balls forward is what I'm hoping for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't do much of that. And, I, mm. and he did look like suddenly, I'm not sure, this is, does this, he didn't look automatically like a kind of like Nicky Law kind of no. creative midfielder. He looked more like kind of, more of what we've already got, a kind of Collins kite kind of shuttler. Yes. You know, um which is which is good, but we kind of already have two of those. Let we, alone Dieng and Asangana and, you know, whoever else. The last ten minutes of Saturday, we had the pressure. Uh we had the ball most of the time. And it just concerned me slightly. And I, obviously it's very, very early days and so forgive me, Kyle Taylor, when you're an absolute mastermind of forward balls. But I was just like that's the there were points in those last five minutes where the ball just needed to go forwards. Yeah, I and... agree. There's one time we got caught in possession actually, and yeah, then it, it was yeah. caught on and, a, and it um, sparked a forest green counter attack. I do think we got let off the hook a few times. Mm. Um, one by another really good 
performance in goal by Cameron Dawson. Excellent again. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, just it's with trepidation that I say it, but he is looking like a good signing, isn't he? I mean, like yeah. I, I think we kind of said the same thing about Lewis Ward when he signed. So I, I don't think it's the same as that, but a couple of great. Saves. I mean, he's, he's stopped he's... guaranteed goals, and to be honest, Forest Green strikers they'll be they'll be disappointed with that. But with, they they had better chances than us, and they should have won the game. Yeah, no, I'd agree it with that. It was one in the first half. Let's just talk about this. First half. About five minutes in. About five minutes in. Mm. It's, like, it's like Asangana. That Asangana open goal. But apart from, I think, I think, I think it's Jamil Matt kind of goes for it, but he should leave it to live for his mate who's behind him. who had a tap in and we get each other's way or he nicks it off his toe or something. But it was a big let off because it was just like, you know. That's a goal. Yeah. And it should have been a goal, um, but yeah, good, good, a few good stops from Dawson and a sort of goal-saving tackle by guaranteed to be here until at least January. Josh Key. Yeah, so that's the other big news, of course. Key, as we as we were watching the hours tick down, hoping yeah. that Key wasn't going anywhere, and he and he hasn't. He stayed. I knew it was going to happen when in the morning or maybe even the day before. Exit the City on Twitter were posting load of like iPhone backgrounds of him wearing the new kit and you think they wouldn't if they they wouldn't I mean I'm not saying they have all the inside track on the last minute transfers it still could have happened but I was just like this is a this is a good sign you know yeah I mean it's kind of thing that when you otherwise uh... I was put out another iPhone wallpaper immediately after he goes no you have to smash your phone when a when a player becomes an ex player and he's still your wallpaper, you got to smash that phone. All right, wouldn't be a problem for me because mine is covered in tempered glass. Ooh, um, good tempered or bad tempered? Bad. Uh, it's broken already, so probably bad. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, uh, Josh Key is with us. Yeah, you're right for another. What's that? Four months at least. Yeah. I mean, and that tackle's unreal. Sweeney kind of misses it. Yep. Yeah. Um. This guy's through on goal. Can't yeah. think who it is. Josh Key is completely the wrong side of him. Yeah. Somehow manages to kind of get his foot across, take all of the ball, none of the player, and you know there's and never in doubt. It's, it's a risky challenge, and it would have been a you know probably with definite penalties in the box. So so and amazing. The referee. Um, Obviously, he was, you know, saw nothing wrong with it because there was nothing wrong with it. Couldn't be anything more right with it. And Josh Key, every time I see him, he seems to add a new skill almost every time I see him. You're like, oh, well, you know, he's really good at going forwards and winging the ball in. Well, now he's really good at scoring and getting in the box. Oh, well, now he's really good at headering. Oh, well, tackling too. He's got, he's, he really got a lot of talent, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he really is. Hey, here's a question, or rather a statement. If you go down Alfington Road... There's a blue plaque, right? And I was like, oh, it was new. Who's that for? Oh, a new one? Yeah. Okay. It's for someone who'd previously been a, I think maybe the first ever woman Labour City Councillor. Got a plaque, right? Okay. Fair enough. All good. Um, we should start seeing some Exeter City plaques, shouldn't we? We've got an Exeter City Museum. We've got an, a Grecian archive. We've got a lot of stuff. Let's get some plaques up. Yeah, okay. I mean, the problem with that is that they have to be do have to be quite location specific. So it have to be somewhat an Exeter City player yeah. or manager who had done something in a very specific place. Yeah. I mean, we can stick them all over at St James Park if you want. I do. But this was... <laughs> I think for that I don't think they'd have much impact there. Like this was where Ollie Watkins shot from. You know, this is where Jack Stacey hit that winner. Yeah, same position actually. So. It is. Yeah, it'd be um, easy. This is where Randall Williams did his first backflip. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I'm up for it, but I think you, I think the idea needs development. All right. Well, get in touch with us, listeners. Have you got a location idea? Because uh, yeah. Cliff Bastin grew up somewhere, Heavertree, I believe, and then he ran the uh, horse and the pony and trap down uh, Black Boy Road, didn't he? What's that now? That's the sorry head now. Oh, that's actually not at all. Yeah, that's gone too. Oh, is it? It's like they're being... It's all been gutted. Get a Cliff Bastin plaque up. All right, yeah, contender. That's the best. I don't know anything about him. 
Well, um, that's where he was the landlord. Before my time, to be honest. So, <laughs> I mean, he's also before my time, just to put that out Where was he? <laughs> Sounds like you know a lot about his pub. Actually, I went to school with him. Yeah. I'm uh, 88 years um, old. Okay, cool. Um, I'll tell you one. We could put a, I believe it's now Burger Bar Hub Box. Oh, yeah. We could stick a blue plaque there for Bertie Kosic, where oh, he yeah. used to have his, his French crep, uh joint. But... <laughs> It wasn't that bad. um, Mm. Gormandine, I think. Uh, Yeah, well remembered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kozic. uh, So we could put a Kozic blue plaque on the side of that, perhaps. Nice. That would be a good one. Um, There's more. There's many more. I'm sure we'll just have to think of them. Yep, get those suggestions in. Tony Keller ran a pub as well, didn't he, I think? But maybe that one the next time. I can't remember now. Uh, I don't know. Mm. Again, before my time. Uh, We could put up a plaque where Ben Criseni's mum's a physio. Yeah, she well, she might not be up for that. You never know. <laughs> uh, There's probably well, already a plaque up that just says her name on. You know. Oh yeah, I'm looking for more specific. You know, like this was where Paul Tisdale put first put on a fedora. Yeah, but the problem is that'll be in Bath. Oh yeah, doesn't work. He barely set foot in Exeter. Apart no, he used to go to Car- Carluccio's. Little, and... A little coffee in Carluccio's or um, what's it called, Artigiano. This is where Tisdale ordered a, you know, mocha chocchino. Uh yeah. I'd say he's um, he's a black Americano man. Do you think so? Yeah, I reckon. Um, anyway, um, I've completely... Oh, yeah, Josh Key. So I thought he was really good. I thought he had another excellent game. And we've got him for yeah. some of this season. I'm always talking about how, you know, Amond and Nombe, a bit ineffective, essentially. I didn't really get the service. No. Like you said, a few balls in behind for Nombe, which looked good. And I think that's what we want to be getting him doing which is something that Bowman and Matt Jay last season weren't really capable of um, but I think obviously the real kind of like Cameron Dawson and also the, that defence that's where it needs you know at one point George Ray went down with a kind of some sort of injury yeah and then I started I started to sort of think then right who comes in now and then I immediately I was just oh right it's yeah, who is it? It's Jonathan Grounds. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. So if one of them get, I mean, Pitt Sweeney had a great start to the season. George Ray's looked like a really good signing. Yeah. Um, Hartridge has been... And Hartridge, obviously, is the absolute star of the show, if you yeah. ask me. He's yeah. just like, is there nothing he can't do? You know. Is Jordan Dyer higher in the pecking order than Jonathan Grounds? Oh, I don't. I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt it. He's the kind of player... But there's Dyer too, of course. I mean, yeah. knowing City, Dyer's the kind of player that would come in and we'd be like, oh, it's really, you know, we're on our kind of last threads here. And then he has a brilliant game and then... Yeah, maybe. That's what happens sometimes, yeah, isn't hopefully. it? Yeah, hopefully. With Hart... If you look at Hartridge's development, he kind of... That was a bit of a slower... Oh, maybe not. Well, than, well there was a Maybe gap. not than Dyer. Dyer did sort of start last season, perhaps. So maybe he's kind of like... I read a stat about... Hartridge was that, that between his second league appearance and his third league appearance, there was a massive gap. Now, partly because he was out on loan, of course, but you know, yeah. it was obviously a. But he looked, he looked good the season before. We kind of stopped. I think it was whenever that last time we were in the Papa John's, whatever it's called back then, leasing dot yes. com. Yes. Um, he played a few games in that, and that's when that's when I started to see kind of like, oh, this guy looks like a bit of a player. Mm. Anyway, yeah, Jordan Dyer. Quite possibly. But you're right, Ray. Too. But then, you know, it's not like you're... Um, it's not like, oh, don't worry, because Jordan Dyer or Jonathan Grounds could step in. It's sort of like, okay, well, hopefully that would be all right, but... Yeah. No, I know. that. I mean, that three... Jordan Dyer's change. hair would be the most troubling thing I would think about. It's quite... Uh, well, he's got the two things. He's got the chin strap beard, and he's got the kind of... Yeah, it's sort of a bit, it's like a bit like a kind of 90s sort of French crop, isn't it? Where yes. it's all brushed forward, but very short. Yes. And then sort of like, you know, very combed. It looks, I don't know, it looks Well, it looks like Amelie's haircut without the nice bit on the side. <laughs> yeah, it does a bit, yeah. Yeah, and you know. Well, I, was, I think I compared it to Lloyd Christmas as well from Dumb and Dumb, a bit um, like that. Yeah, I mean, that that's not a comparison you want to be involved in, I don't in, is imagine it? it's what he's going for. <laughs> Yeah. Turning my car into a dog. <laughs> um, no, I know that's not Lloyd Christmas. That's the other one. That's Harry. Um, 
but so you're saying there's a chance I'm playing on Saturday, Matt. <laughs> um, listeners, let me say this to you, and let me say this to you, Dan. Uh, while we're talking about centre backs, have you picked up on the vast controversy around Tom Parks's dodgy internet activity? That makes it sound worse than it is. Um, well, I have. But there's, I don't think controversy is the right word because I couldn't find anything about it. You know that phrase, than... no smoke without fire? Yeah. That is not true in this case. Well, isn't it? So apparently Parks, the first I saw it was a profound apology from Parks on Instagram. Let's read it out in its entirety. Yeah, w- including errors. Is there errors in it, is there? Yeah, it's not. It's not. We'll get to that. Properly apostrophized. A post was liked tonight by myself, which was an accident. I would never wish ill on official at official ECFC or any players. I love my time with the club and wish them all the best for the future. Yeah. Three paragraphs, but no other punctuation. Doesn't matter. It's social media. If you're if we're complaining about punctuation in that kind of format, then that just just us showing our age. Although isn't Tom Parks about Sort of forty odd. <laughs> anyway, anyway, apparently, no. Well, I don't know what it was. There's no suggestion. No of, we don't. We, I've not seen what it is. I very much believe him. <laughs> I think uh, we'd need to know more. Wouldn't we, I, I think suppose? he liked a post was that presumably a, was slagging us off. I'm guessing it must have been a comment. It must have been a Forest Green comment, was it? it must be, I mean, you get. Or I an mean, if you comment. ever look at comments on anything posted by a football club, they're just utterly insane and it would be some kid from like southeast asia yeah sort of saying shit club banter club it's sort of like why i don't understand i mean like what are you what are you doing with your life there's a load of things going on, on the internet at the like, moment, why have there? you chosen exeter city versus forest green in league two to then pipe up on i mean i worry about these people they're obviously not get they're obviously missing something in their lives love a warm hug, the embrace of a the warm embrace of a cherished loved one. Um, also a hobby. Just go for a walk. Yeah. Airfix is nice. Oh, Airfix is nice. Um, what about, you know, Smite? What's Smite? It's like that Cornish game. I've never heard of that. Smite, it's specific to Cornwall. I mean, anything. Get into anything. Anything yeah. you want. Yeah. Um, anything. Uh, Skeletrics. Do you know what would be really good? What you could do that would make you feel nice? Search, uh, I don't know, a nice word, sunset on the internet. Have that as your, you know, saved hashtag. And then just go through and like all the sunsets. If you want to be involved on the internet, you don't have to just write joke of a club. Yeah, you could just put... You could just put lovely sunset. Lovely sunset. You could start a new Instagram post, a new Instagram page called Lovely Sunsets of the you World. Get, you get loads of interaction there. If that's what you're after. That'd be great. People, because people love a sunset. Who doesn't I mean, love a sunset? Anytime there's like a sunset in Exeter, you know, you'll get multiple people posting that picture of that. Yeah. And then you could branch out. And... Oh my God, this sky. You could do sunrises. Have you liked our sister page, Sunrises of the World? Yeah. Then you could do the moon. It's, it, there's many things available. Golden hour of Instagram, you know, like anything. Yeah, nice. That's just sun related stuff. I mean, there's there's anything, any number of things you could do. That would give you more joy, guaranteed, than going on to low league football clubs from around the world and giving them a bit of grief. Because all you're doing is annoying Scott Palfrey. That's all you do, and us, turns out. No, I think it annoys a lot of people. I think it. I think it shouldn't. All, right. all you're doing is people. annoying people. Basically, I mean, what you're doing is you're accidentally sort of like tricking Tom Parks into liking a comment. <laughs> Parks has been weeping for days now. He looks like a hard man, hard man exterior, inside the heart of a child. I wonder if he just thought like, oh, I'll pop a little like on that and see what happens. And then he's got, <laughs> not because he likes it, just out of, out of kind of like curiosity. Can I get away with this? Yeah, yeah. Like when people Where is he? Cats. He's in Livingston, isn't he? Bored in Livingston. Well, presumably he's just played a game. He's got his own stuff to deal with. It's definitely an accident. Yeah. He's just played for Livingston. Maybe he's like, as usual, having to spend a little bit longer on the on the toilet. <laughs> Scrolling through while he's, you know, on the can. Yeah. He's Who only got say? one hand. Who can say? Accidentally like something. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for the apology, Tom. Yeah, nice to hear from you. Good to hear from you. You know, keep in touch. It doesn't just have to be apologies. 
you can know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell us, tell us about a lovely sunset you saw. Why not? Tom Parks' Sunsets of the World. You could branch out. I mean, he's missing a trick. Um, on that note, uh, we'll be back in a minute. Welcome back. Um, remember, you can always get in touch with us in all the normal ways. Uh, on email, bigbankpod at gmail.com. On Twitter, at bigbankpod. And on Facebook with the Big Bank Theory podcast. We love to hear from you. I'd like to hear about your plaques, mainly. Where would you put a plaque? What would it say? Yeah. I Let us know. know. Yeah. No, you don't know. Uh, that's why we need the listeners to help us out. Anyway, coming up, uh, like I said last week, it really does feel like a... Um, well, I'm really noticing the gaps. Oh, right. Saturday to Saturday. Feels yeah. Like, oh, a whole week for another game. Yeah, it feels like an eternity, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but then got... also as well, like, I mean, I think it was available on iFollow, the game just gone for some reason, due to an international break. Yeah. But the games aren't being shown on that. As, you know, so, so really, if you don't go to the away game, it's two weeks in between seeing Exeter City. Yeah. Isn't it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, obviously, I, would listen, I was listening on the radio, so you do have a the kind of like, you've got, you're, you're kind of witnessing a game, but you're, like I said, you only really see it once every two weeks. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it does feel like a long old time when we were watching two. Uh, but I take this over sitting in my bedroom watching on an iPad any day. Yeah, obviously there's uh, much to be grateful for. But there we are. Anyway, so it's Scunthorpe. Uh, last year called the Sands Venue Stadium. Now it's back to old Glanford Park. Is it? Yeah, but it's not so. just sort of known as both. No, apparently it's not sponsored anymore. Oh, right. You might recall that the owners. Our old friends. Old. Cool Fun Limited. They're, the company's called Cool Fun Limited. because Husband you, and wife endeavour, isn't it? Mr. Cool and Mrs. Fun, presumably. <laughs> um, you don't... I mean, you don't You don't want to have unlimited Cool Fun. That would be just too wild, too much to cope with. I mean, come on. So it's got to be limited. Yeah. And I'd imagine up at Scunthorpe at the moment, it is there's pretty limited. There's a time limited. for Cool Fun and there's a time to get serious. And I'm not sure Scunthorpe have realised that yet because they're 19th. Yeah. I mean, they've drop like a stone don't, they? don't forget I mean it's hard isn't it as an owner to come in and try and tell your team to buckle down when your business card reads cool fun limited <laughs> so it was what I was, all I was doing was having myself some cool fun you yeah. know that's why I was out last night on a Friday <laughs> anyway uh, anyway um, Scundorp of course were league one two seasons ago uh, people predicted them to go have a good season last year they haven't done and it doesn't look like they've started very well this year either. I mean, no, uh, it doesn't, does it? I mean, they've got no real exciting players of any note. No. Nope. I mean, there could be, get correct us if we're wrong, but I don't think there's anyone stands out there. You know, I mean, who knows? They could be knocking around, they could make it into the playoff place, I suppose, but more than likely, mid table beckons. I think so. Um, You could say the same bars, but. You know. Hopefully, we don't have to say the same about us, but it feels like it at the minute. I By wouldn't the way, say that, though, because we've got Awara Edwards. Yeah, I know. Um, by the way, uh, the Sands Venue Stadium, a.k.a. Uh, Glasford Goss- Park. Gosford Park, where it's called. Gosford, Gosford Park. Do you know the name of the road it's on? Butthole Lane. Almost. Jack Brownsword Way. <laughs> wow. That's got to be a joke. That's not a joke. <laughs> It's not a joke. Uh, Jack Brownsword. Way. Who's he? Jack Brownsword. Where's his blue plaque? Where's his brown plaque? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's what they've got going on for them, which is uh, kind of remarkable. It's, it's a lot of comedy of errors there, isn't it, really? Right, um, I'll tell you who Jack Brownsword was. He's yeah, a, He was a former Scumfort player, so basically it's the equivalent of the old blue plaque. Okay, okay. It'd be like us calling it Stuart Fleetwood way. Yeah. You know. I'd like that. Yeah. Um, you know who their manager is, though? Neil Cox. Remember him for Villa? Uh, no. Oh. <clears throat> he played a lot of games for Villa. Um, oh, that's not true. He was Middlesbrough, he was Villa, he was Bolton, he was Watford. Right, okay. This is like a end of the 90s, early noughties. No, it doesn't sound particularly memorable. You know, like, no. Right. Well, he's gone to Scunthorpe as um, his first managerial job, and obviously struggling a bit. Well, see what happens. 
Good luck to him. There's lots of parallels here with Exeter City. City need to go here and pick up all, some points, don't they? I, th- I think so, yeah. I, I, I think we Not do. the end of the world if we don't. But it's early days in the season. I'm trying to avoid the kind of early season panic. Do you know what I mean? Because we know what it's like in this division. If you, def- if you get off to a slow start, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. You know, we've got off to slow starts before and been promoted. And it seems to happen to a couple of teams every year. Yep. Someone yep. comes along at the end. You know, look at kind of Bolton last season, you know. I'm not suggesting they're as bad as... I can't remember how they started. but they, no, they, def- started, they started poorly. But, you right. know, and they definitely kind of like picked up towards the end. So I'm not getting... I'm not panicking. And I think the, t- the team, given the kind of like big old shift in the personnel, yep. new spine, as, as they say. Yeah. Um, something unfortunately isn't possible in um, human medicine. No, you can get a new spine. spine these days. You can get a new, almost anything else, but not a new spine. Exit City have though, and it's going to take a little while for it to kind of fuse together. Yeah, you don't want the body to reject it. No. Come yeah, on. the body being like all the other players. <laughs> Sweeney, you know, he's, sort of, he's sort of one of the vertebrae really, isn't he? Um, you yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Josh Key, sort of a rib. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Well, I, I, I think, I mean, A, because if you're going to Scunthorpe to watch that away fans, you deserve a win. Um, yep. I think, obviously, the Bristol Rovers performance was brilliant. I think... But then let's not get too carried away because they were rubbish. They were rubbish, yeah, And I think yeah. that is really kind of like the, the the main thing that happened there. And we were solid and took our chan- took our chances well, but we were given... Some very easy ones. That's true. But, you know, like, because of this regular gap in games, Taylor's got enough time on the training pitch with these lot that I'd hope that we'd start to see... That's true, yeah. I'd start to see... And, and um, you know, Collins is still some way off. It looks like Sparks won't be back till next year. So this is kind of the team we've got to work with. Like, Kite will be back now, won't he, Saturday? One game yeah. suspension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that gives us a few options in midfield there. Then so... you've got Kite, Taylor, Dieng... I have to say, at and Garner. at and Garner, but I have to say, he didn't look good when he came on. I think Dieng's still not back to match fitness, I thought is he? at and Garner looked okay initially. Uh, I mean, I'm judging it entirely on that mental shot here. But he did have a mental shot where he just sort of like, I mean, it was kind of... It was the equivalent of a goal kick. Where he leaned so far back. <laughs> and then that's sort of like kids football, isn't it? The, the one thing, when the ball comes to you like that, in a situation like that, the one thing is don't lean back. He's got to, you've got to sky it. Yeah. The equivalent of like the first thing they tell you when you start playing, yeah. getting football coaching as a kid. The equivalent was Kyle Taylor had a shot, which wasn't good, but he put right. his head over yeah. it. Kept and it down. Kept least. it down at least. And I don't know what he was doing there, Nigel, honestly. Uh, but there we are. So I think with no. Kite, Kite back, it'd be interesting to see how Taylor, Dieng, Kite and yeah, Atangana. Well, and Jay sort of in the mix of that as well. He's he sort of like, I mean... He's not really picked up where he... I don't really think he's suited to being that deep. I'd agree with that. I mean, I think he needs to be getting into the box and like... Because that's when he was getting all those goals with assists last year by being one of the two players in the box. Yeah, Slightly different system, as we said. Maybe he'll grow again. Maybe we'll give him time to grow into it. I'm I'm not... I'm not convinced, though, that he's that kind of eight, you know? No, I am... Um... Hmm. Well, I, I, I think it'd be interesting to see Brown drop further back. Because I'd say this about Gianni, Gianni Brown. He doesn't like shooting, does he? Like, he's, there have been several times when he could have had a shot and he hasn't done. Yeah, it seems and, to be, yeah. And he's very good in tight situations. Now, that we've seen that on the edge of the box. But just as often, particularly with defensively minded teams, you play like four and four or five and two or whatever. You get it just as crowded in the middle of the opposition half. And Brown might well sit, you know, you could see a bit of a shift from him back, particularly if Amond and uh, Nombe are playing further forward. I don't know. Yeah, it or might, even if, if ideally, I'm imagining that Brown actually is more of the, he would replace one of those two as the kind of two, really, do you mean, up yeah. front. Yeah. So, but then there is all these options slightly of like swapping him and Jay Round, perhaps, like if you guys like said, if maybe that seems a bit more of a natural fit. I don't know. Here's something. Quite a low attendance, isn't it, so far this season? Yeah. Speaking of going on about Project 6000. Some way off that, I think. Minute. I mean, for, for Forest Green to bring 185 supporters from just up the road, essentially. Yep. Um, when Exeter took, I mean, us not included, 165 to Barrow on a Tuesday night. Yeah. That's 
shameful. I mean, Forest Green, what are they? Well, I know, but you think it'd be a few more than that. Yeah. But then saying that, we only had we only brought four. There's only four thousand people went to watch it, and that's on an August sunny day, school holidays. Yeah. I mean, and it's a little bit worrying, really. You'd think I, there'd be more. You'd think there'd be more there than that. Sutton will be the maybe the judging point because I suppose maybe still some people are away. Yeah, or Swindon, something like that. Yeah, somewhere you know, about the same distance. Yeah, but Swindon I mean, will bring more bigger club, isn't it? Sutton, like you said, a bit smaller, maybe. But we'll have an idea because that's that's then mid September, so the weather should still be nice. It's middle of the month, so it's not like people are. People have been paid fairly recently. I don't know, but you're right. Those it's... things shouldn't be that much of a factor. Well, and given I'm how many... talking more about our own. No, I know. I think given that we've sold, was it 1,700 season tickets? That is that is a very low turnout of everyone else, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm, interesting. I mean, we haven't taken the lead by storm, but then also Bristol Rovers was a really good game and people, we you think, would have felt enthused to be there. Yeah, and as, I mean, the knock-on from that was less people. Yeah, weird. I don't know, it's, you know, Forest Green, are, you know, that's like, well, it's not a glamour tie, but as far as League Two goes, that's two competing teams. They've been our kind of, you know, I mean, kind of rivals in a way. On yeah, the, no, know. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, a little bit a little bit concerning. What are people doing? Watching bike racing. I mean, some people maybe are, co- are still concerned about the yeah, uh, of course. fresh air. Think about that. Um, Chiefs yeah. is back, and I think they played... Saturday, which does always impact a bit, and especially with them coming, I think that was their first home game, or maybe their only their second one. So maybe we lost a few hundred people to that. Right. But yeah, I think if this project six thousand thing's got any chance, those are the kind of things we have to counteract. What do you think about people wearing Chiefs tops to Exeter City games? Deeply unacceptable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's one step away from wearing Argyle. I'm, and I mean that. And you can be shouting at your radios, listeners, if you want, but no. Yeah. I don't mind that you like the Chiefs. I don't mind that you support the Chiefs. I don't think it's... I think it's ill-advised. Don't bring your shirt to the football. You're rubbing our faces in it. Yeah. It's what? tone deaf. That's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. Yeah, well, yeah. You just see it every now and then, don't you? That's what made me think of it. But, having said that, maybe it's... the. I mean, I wouldn't... This is why I stopped spitting at people for wearing them at St. James Park. Uh, partly the pandemic, but also um, maybe it's their first time. And maybe they didn't, want to, they didn't know what to wear. And maybe they've only got one shirt. Yeah, plain shirt. Maybe they've only got one shirt and it's a chief shirt. And then they, on their way out, went into the club shop and bought themselves all three and the keeper shirt. Yeah, I and hope then, so. And one of those sort of polos or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. For, for a new wardrobe. So, so I don't want to be too cross with you. But I do think you're mad. <laughs> is that too strong? No, no, that's, that's exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> um, yeah, if you disagree with me, you can get in touch with us in all the normal ways. No, actually, do you know what? Don't. You don't want to. We don't want to know I about mean, that. That sort of person, I don't want to get. I don't really want them getting in touch. <laughs> Not really. There's no point. What if Rob Baxter comes along, full rugby kit? Who's that? It's the manager, isn't it? The head coach. What of Chiefs? Yeah. You don't even know his name. I mean, that's how little we care. I like that. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, when people say I couldn't care less, I mean, genuinely in this situation, in this sense, like not only can I not care less, if if any information sort of just reaches me, even by accident, uh, that's enough to that's annoying. I find that annoying. I, I tell you I why. I don't want to know. I tell you why I know about Rob Baxter and his brother Richie, is because Spot. I'm an avid watcher of Spotlight. Okay. Um, you know. I've got my favourite presenters. I've got my least favourite presenters. Yeah, sure. Uh, I've got a pie chart in my mind of how much stuff they cover, right? Yeah. You know. I imagine there's a lot of Chiefs, is it? Well, I'd say it's 75% anything in Plymouth. Yeah, it's always been very Plymouth-centric. It's filmed there for a start, isn't filmed it? Filmed there, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then it's like, oh, well, Plymouth's rug- rubbish at rugby, uh, but Exeter are like world beaters, so I suppose we better talk about them. So we're talking like 75% Plymouth, Five percent Chiefs, five percent Torbay, and then the rest of Devon and Cornwall and Dorset squeezed into the remaining five percent. And they love Weymouth. They love Weymouth. They love talking about Weymouth. Well, we've been there, and it is delightful. Yeah, maybe that's why. Talk about Exeter. Talk about well, what's going on here? North Torton. Talk about yeah, you know Biddeford. Yeah, talk about Doddiscombe. Yeah, 
please, talk about Bampton. Dunchidiuk. Dunch, please. Uh, yeah, because otherwise, Dunk as well. What are Lower we? Ting Tong. <laughs> inner Ting Tong as well. Give us both. Um, Is it Inner Ting Tong? Yeah, it's Inner. <laughs> right. Okay. I, don't, I don't care about Plymouth. All right. That's, but anyway, that's what's going on. That's the. the that's st- why I know about Rob yeah. Baxter. Okay. Well, now I know about him, and it just pissed me off. So <laughs> good. Um, yeah. Uh, here's the other thing that there's some anger about. Nikki Jose spotted this Saturday brazenly just walking up Old Tiverton Road. Now, not just walking up Old Tiverton Road. Wearing Exeter City. Now, I don't mean to sound pedantic about this. We already, I already reported that on this podcast. Yep. Months ago. Yep. I told you I'd seen him on Old Tiverton Road, listener. I appreciate not every Exeter City fan listens to this shite. But I <laughs> saw him in Exeter City gear walking up Old Tiverton Road just before the season started. Yeah. If you not, reported it. Yeah. Um, Listen. Anyway, he was there Saturday, reported by several yeah, and people, ex-Webbers. I mean, yeah, not just people. Me at the time was like, what's he doing here? I thought yep. he was gone. And his contract as a player has expired. Yep. Now, it seems like he's a academy coach. It doesn't seem like he is an academy coach. Right. Confirmed. I think he was doing a bit of that last season, wasn't he? When he was yep. obviously, you know, not fit enough to play, injured, whatever. People said he was really good with the younger players. That was a well-reported thing. I think Jake Taylor even wrote about it in his right. column. or yeah. twi- Someone said, or maybe it was an answer to a question or something. But, um, yeah, so that's what he's doing. Has there ever been a bigger example of of people making assumptions on a person's character based on their facial expressions? Yeah. As in, he just looks... He's got what they call um, RBF. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah. Breasting bitch face. <laughs> for, those, for those of you over the age of, I don't know, 40, um, 50. Uh, yeah, he looks sullen, doesn't he? Anyway, but... he just got a face on him, hasn't he? Do you know I mean, it doesn't mean he's evil. And I think that's what a lot of people think. <laughs> There's a lot of assumptions going on, isn't there? Um, um, anyway, so he's there coaching the academy. So he hasn't got another club. Presumably he's retired, whether he wants to or not. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he looked for a, a, a similar deal where he could, could have got a playing slash coaching deal, but maybe that's that's probably harder to come by, isn't it, you know? So he's, I mean, it's not a bad place. We know he likes hanging out or, or ex- as very many vegetarian and vegan hot spots. So maybe he's just like, you know what, I'll just stick around here. Do I like it, a nice training facility, nice bunch of kids. I'll stick around. I hope it works out for him. Yeah, me I mean, too. some people are really cross. I, um, completely unnecessarily. We don't know. He might not even be getting paid. It might just be for his certificates or whatever. Um, here, you know, there's a common uh, thread with Exeter City that you work your way through the club. Can you imagine the rage when Matt Taylor goes to manage Argyle and a Jose is appointed his successor? I tell you what. Yeah, I can imagine it. I, you know, I'm not even against. I'm it. not against it either. But some people would literally combust at the thought of it. I think he'd be. I think he'd make a good manager. On what grounds? Scary. Yeah, all right. Um, well, that's that's our latest uh, a Jose hot news. It's not our news. Someone else saw him. But... Yeah, well, I think that's probably the end of the hot news. I mean, not only that, he was on, he was pictured in one of the one of the videos. Packages. Yeah, he was. Yeah, that's right. So, so there we are, Nicky yeah. Jose. Yeah, that's it. That's it for uh, Nicky Jose. Unless I mean, you know, we know what he's doing. We know where he, you know, and he's going to be knocking around. So that's it now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So um, if you see him. You know, say hello. Don't give him a hard time. Well, definitely don't give him a hard time. Actually, don't say hello. I just leave him alone. Leave him alone. Yeah. Um, talking to people who have been given a hard time, Ben Seymour got a couple of goals in the week. See this? I did, The yes. Premier League Under-23s Cup, is that what it's called these days? What's got to do with the Premier League? I think it's you have to qualify to then play the Premier League Under-23 teams. Okay, I right. I think they run it. Right. I think. So we beat Argyle. Seymour got two goals. Yep. Yeah. Well, he's always been a goal scorer at every level other than first team seniors, hasn't he? Yeah. Like that's always been the case. He's always been a goal scorer at, at younger level and when he's gone on loan. Um, I'd just love for him to get a few goals for the first team. I don't think he's ever going to be our main striker. No, but you'd want him to be an option where coming on you think he might score. Yes. 
that the at crowd the moment, thinks he might score, that the opposition thinks he might score. Yeah, at the moment it's just sort of like <clears throat> it's almost a guarantee that there's one position, where's one player on the pitch who won't be scoring. You know. Yeah, you remember when Matt Jeff- as much as he, yeah, sometimes he's. I'm not saying he's been entirely ineffe- ineffective when he's played. He's actually played well sometimes and been put in positions which don't necessarily suit his game. Yeah, he's not tall. He's not bad in the air. He's not bad at holding it up. No, he's not. He's not quick. He does look a finisher for yeah. anything we've seen outside of the first team. But yeah, I hope that I do hope that there's still a place for him in there, and it would be very useful to have someone that you could bring off the bench. If he got he five goals caught. this season, that would be incredibly useful. Yeah, yeah, as an as a as a, off the bench, off yeah. the bench, yeah, absolutely, yeah. If if like we expect, and you know, I'm I'm still hopeful that he will. Yeah, well, it was good for him to get a couple down uh, home park. Yeah, whatever day always, that was this week. Always good to beat them. Always good to beat them. Uh, I think that's about it. I think that catches us up to speed. Thanks for listening, as always, listeners. Uh, We'll be back next week with the hot take from the Cool Fun Limited Stadium from the Party Time Ground. Yeah. I forgot what it's called. The Sands Venue Stadium, that thing. Uh, Glanville. Glanford Pope. Park. That place. It's Gunthorpe. Uh, have a good trip if you're going up there. It's big old, long old poke, as they say. Yeah. Um, right up on the old northwest coast is it northeast no, it's not on the coast <laughs> but you know close what enough is it called sands venue then where's this sand oh i don't know maybe it's like steve sands all oh, right yeah it could be he sounds fun and like, cool. it's like the, my favorite thing in cornwall is the screech owl sanctuary okay yeah there's no screech owls there it's run by a guy called like bill screech is a screech owl a thing yeah is it yeah yeah that's a official yeah b- species sort of breed is it yes well, do they screech i'm assuming so right i've never encountered one is there a mr belding owl <laughs> <laughs> yeah good that is a 90s reference um it's near gnome world not to be confused with home park could you do them both in a day oh yeah good i think that's you could do them both in the morning good old fun that's talk about cool fun yeah right owl sanctuary in the morning gnome world in the afternoon your kids are lucky aren't they <laughs> They've never been. <laughs> Outrageous. Well, thanks for listening, listeners, and we'll see you next week. My name's John. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dan. Cheers. See you soon.